Hi everyone. On May 22nd, the Holy Orthodox Church celebrates the memory of an extraordinary man living in extraordinary times, and also his life is shrouded in a bit of mystery and a bit of confusion as well. His name is John of Vladimir, the wonder worker who was slain by the sword. Now John lived in the late 900s, early 1000s, and was a great ruler of the nation of Serbia. During his time, the emperor of Constantinople was Basil II, who is also known as the Bulgar Slayer. John, having come from this small village in Bulgaria named Vladimir, is someone who was said to be, even from an early age, uh, quite studious, quite intelligent, uh, full of piety, was not seeking after worldly things in any way, and was someone who was very, very concerned for the poor. Well, I don't have time to go through all the vicissitudes and genealogies that led to his ascension of the throne, but eventually he did become king of Serbia and was beloved by absolutely everyone. They thought he was so extraordinary that he was even compared in the things that he did to Constantine the Great because he was so anxious to establish orthodoxy everywhere that he went and to bring those that had fallen away back into the fold. Well, John, being the type of person that spent many hours in prayer each day, was also someone who was a master strategist. He understood the art of war and all of the things involved with it. And unfortunately for him, he would have lots of chances to exercise that knowledge. Because during this time, aside from the Constantinopolitan activities in the empire, you also had uh, an Emperor Samuel, who was a Bulgarian, who was warring against John and Basil II of Constantinople, and was especially upset when John Vladimir made a bargain with Basil II and aligned himself with him. Well, because of this, Samuel pursued John Vladimir and his forces all over the place. There were many, many battles. And finally, at one time, John Vladimir found himself caught up on a high mountain with a number of his forces, and the place was inundated with poisonous snakes as well, many of whom bit the soldiers, in which John Vladimir beseeched Christ that he would cure them, and this cure did indeed come. But yet the enemies of John Vladimir kept increasing and increasing until finally he realized that it was simply impossible for his forces to win. Well, he did not want his men to have to suffer because of this. And so he gathered them around and despite their protestations, he told them, I'm going to turn myself over so that you can go free. And that's, that's exactly what happened. Samuel took him into custody and threw him into prison. And it's at this point that the story becomes pseudo-legendary, uh, pseudo-astonishing in many ways, but also part of the deep romantic ethos in the literature of the Serbian nation. Because John, while he was in prison, was visited by Samuel's daughter, who was named Theodora. Now, Theodora was, by all accounts, a wonderful person, and she would spend a lot of time going to the dingiest of prisons to, in order to help the prisoners that were there and try to alleviate uh, their necessities. Well, at one time, she went down and she discovered John Vladimir, and after speaking with him, she immediately fell in love with this man. Well, it reached a point where she had decided that she wanted to marry John Vladimir, but of course the fact that he was a prisoner of her father posed a few difficulties. But as Samuel was not uh, inclined to dissuade his daughter in anything that she wanted, he then gave his blessing for it. And as time went on, he himself began to realize that John Vladimir was indeed quite the extraordinary man and someone who was very, very gifted and very, very graced of God. 
Well, at this point, the story diverges a little bit into two different manuscripts. One is Slavic, uh, according to the Serbian sources that we have, and another according to the Greek uh, sources. So we're going to stick with the Serbian sources for now because that's where the big romantic ethos takes place. And that is that uh, both John Vladimir and Theodora were joined together, yet John Vladimir had long ago said that he was going to give his life to virginity. And Theodora, recognizing this, gave consent to this, and they ruled together in a very, very generous and long-suffering way to many, many people, building churches, establishing monasteries, hospitals, places for travelers, all kinds of things. It was really quite an astounding marriage. Yet at one time, John Vladimir was out hunting, and as his life tells us, he was actually being hunted by God at that point because he saw an eagle that sort of appeared like a sun with wings and was flying away and had a cross around its chest. And John Vladimir saw this extraordinary sight and pursued it through the forest. And finally, when the eagle stopped, it was determined that this was actually an angel of God who appeared to John Vladimir and told him that he wanted, according to the instructions of the Lord himself, for a church to be built on that site. And John Vladimir did indeed do this. Well, unfortunately, despite this romantic nature of this uh, epic Serbian story, things did not always go so well for John Vladimir because of all the difficulties involved in the very warlike provenances all around the Byzantine Empire at that time. So John was eventually betrayed by a family member, uh, Theodora's cousin, Vladislav. Vladislav wanted to capture John Vladimir because he, he was very upset at the inroads that John Vladimir was making against many of um, Vladislav's people. And so he sent him a gold cross and said, you know, why don't you come, uh, you know, over to uh, our headquarters, if you will. We could talk about things. And John Vladimir sent word back and said, well, no, I tell you, I can't do that. But our Lord was crucified on a cross of wood. If you will send me a cross of wood instead of gold, I will come. And that's exactly what happened. And of course, when John did arrive, Vladislav immediately had him imprisoned. And in fact, at one point, he tried to kill him himself, but was unable to. And so John Vladimir having been told by the angel back at the place in the woods where he was told to build a church that he would indeed suffer a martyr's death, he told Vladislav to take his own sword and to cut off his head because he was willing to defend the Orthodox faith and everything that pertained to it. Vladislav did this. And the story here says that miraculously, after the head was severed from his holy body, that the body actually picked up the head, left, hopped on a horse, and galloped off. Of course, we don't know how much legend to attribute to this, but it is very interesting that even to this day, many of the older icons of St. John of Vladimir show him standing there with a cross in one hand, the cross that Vladislav sent him, and holding his head in another. No matter what the truth of the matter is, it is still a remarkable story and an indication that the foundational truth behind all of this is that in these days where all of us are questioning various rulers all over the world, there was one who lived in Serbia between the late 900s and early 10 hundreds that was a godly and righteous man who did everything he could for his people and brought many to the Orthodox faith. He reposed in the year 10. 15. May his example be something to all of us who live in very difficult times. Bye-bye.